So, uh, from learning with love, sorry, I would love to be with you, but, uh, you know, life, last minute. So, let's give my presentation, and uh, it's headless CMS. Basically, uh, of course, why am I here? First of all, because uh, I talked once with uh, Tim and he basically put me on the conference and said, oh, you need to talk about that. But in any case, I'm a former clone consultant, former clone trainer, former clone evangelist, former clone developer, former board member, and current clone user. So basically, I use clone every day of my job. Now I am one of those mythical figures that never goes to conferences. You see, I'm not there. And uh, I can share a little bit of uh, what happened. Since the last time I was there with you guys in Bristol 2014. At the time, I was speaking uh, the case for clone distributions. Basically, uh, I've been playing with that in 2012 and 13, creating clone uh, in package versions for the Brazilian government, especially. And it seemed like, OK, the way to go for, for me at the moment. But uh, life changed. There was one thing that didn't change. I was pushing along with everybody else for the idea of REST APIs. So since then, first I moved to sunny Berlin. Look, amazing place, sunny. Like, that was like um, two months ago. Right now it's dark and gray. It's exactly the place Nico runs away in the winter. I was the CTO for Rocket, the Rocket Internet in Latin America for uh, a few months there. And uh, while I was there, I created three new companies. So Lendico, it's a peer-to-peer -peer lending solution, uh, Validate, that's um, something like Salon Meister or uh, 100. Basically, you schedule your haircuts and nails and stuff like that. And the third one was Rightwing. Rightwing is Airbnb for cars. In uh, Rightwing and in Lenco, we use Plone as the content management and management solution. But now, I am happy in Berlin. I work with Griffey, okay? These amazing people, you see. There's a, a majority of uh, beautiful people here. I'm part of the, their affirmative action for ugly and old people. And uh, basically, this is Griffin, right? Uh, no, you can uh, you can laugh, but this is my day job because we take care of taking pictures all over the world for some of the most important marketplaces. And uh, as our fearless leader once said, we are basically a marketplace for visual content solutions, photography, uh, photography video, virtual reality, and so on. And, uh, oh, sorry, one uh, last information to give an idea of the scale. Only this year, we already uh, delivered 200,000 pictures to our customers. So we are talking about uh, pictures globally in a large scale uh, with quality for all types of business goes from portraits like this one from Andre to uh, beautiful uh, hotel rooms in Bali or beautiful places here in Berlin and food and so on. Uh, in, during those two years, I had a common challenge and uh, it was something that Working with uh, a content management solution for so long, I was not expecting, but the truth is, uh, everything is API based, based right now. We are moving to a world that's API based, not because, oh, that's cool and so on, but by the simple fact that you have multiple devices in the, in the front end world, so the user can be assessing the, your solution with a computer, with an app, with a browser in a mobile device, or uh, as these nice doodle shows with uh, some uh, virtual reality classes. 
the truth is, uh, life is getting more interesting, but for those who play with uh, the in the, the last mile with the delivery of content to, to, to those devices like a living hell because you have different formats, different platforms and so on. For us, that uh, most of us in here are uh, mostly backend except for Lauren. Actually, I want to I want a, a free consultancy on React at some point. But uh, the API is just like a, a, a contract you have with those devices, right? You will have a bunch of other services or microservices as you want running uh, behind the API and honestly CMS is one of them. It's one of the boxes we need to manage to maintain every day and uh, even though it's important especially for uh, customer acquisition and so on, we're talking about one. For, for instance here at Griffith, the image server is way more important. The image server is the one that goes and gets raw uh, image files converted to uh, 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 some uh, nice uh, JPEG, uh, so that our QA team can go there and can go there and evaluate the quality of the picture and so on, generate uh, different sizes and thumbnails and so on and so forth. Payment quite important in any marketplace like uh, our company. Uh, this is the kind of challenge you have. Uh, CMS is just another small box inside your API world. Of course, people come with crazy ideas. One of them is like, oh, CMS is a small box and I already, I'm already writing code. Why not write like uh, CMS into our back office solution? And for those of you trying to poke your eyes out, this is PHP, my friends. Actually, that was the moment I decided to work with Go again because, okay, I had this project and someone started writing a CMS component. And, oh, let's start with a controller and then a service and then a manager. Because it's just managing small boxes. You know, I have those blocks and I build the page on the front end and so on and so far. In the end, you start like that. That's a terrible solution. Everyone in this conference already tried to play, oh, let me think about creating my own solution. Another bad idea, oh, what if instead of uh, uh, having a common solution for everything, we decide, okay, this part of our site basically runs on WordPress and everything else, all the other routes and URLs, run on something else. And all of a sudden, if you had one delivery problem, now you have two. Because, oh, someone needs to create templates for WordPress. Oh, but also the information needs to be available on your app. And on your, uh, it needs to be also uh, responsive and so on and so forth. So, honestly, I had to deal with that a few times. And it always is not, no, it's simple. And at some point you find out it's like a, a, a living hell. Is there another way? So, creating something from scratch is a terrible idea. Putting some CMS already, CMS uh, solution there is a bad idea. What can you do? Yeah, actually there are some other uh, uh, ways of doing that. One of them, it's this company called Prismic.io, right? They are San Francisco slash Paris based, and they've been doing that for quite a while already, I think they were founded in 2012, is basically a headless a CMS, you go to their site, register, create your application, create the, the content to the web, and so on and so forth. And uh, the interesting part is, I learned about this company two days ago when I was preparing this part of the presentation. Because I was, okay, everybody knows about this other company, Contentful. These guys are like the, the probably the leader of this market in the long run. They are a Berlin based company. They have been doing that since 2012 as well. They have some really big customers and uh, a great technical team. Uh, I have some friends there. They have one of the best uh, tech evangelists I've known. And also, they have a, an amazing, incredible, fantastic marketing budget. 
I've drink beers on their tap uh, already two or three times. But what's important, they raised already $16 million and uh, their solution works. Of course, when you're talking with their DevOps, their season means, you feel the pain of, oh, how hard it is to create a solution, a global solution like that. But in the end, it works. They are happy. They are making money. They, I would say they are profitable, but let's be honest, I have no idea. Nobody does in this world. So, uh, in common, uh, I'm going to basically say the tech version of what they have in common is everything is through the web. Everything is really user friendly. Everything does not require a, a really skilled developer to go there and create the data entry to or publish the content. And uh, you know, in the plumbing world, we have Apido, we have now Starity, we have Dylan J that's not there today, but Dylan J yelling all of the time like we need to do to the lab, we need to. That's the point. This is the kind of solution people uh, uh, pay big but to, to, to run their business on. Also, they have really good documentation. Okay, considering uh, their, what they're playing there is a moving target because every customer is going to come out with a, a business solution, they're doing pretty well. And uh, Aceman, this is the type of stuff that you do for the plumbing community and this guy will do on a, on, a, on a larger scale. And then they have something that we are starting to get there. Uh, I would like to thank Eric for the effort on the plum client. Even though uh, I've been trying to, to compile and build on my machines since forever, every time Angular comes up with a different game, we're like, oh, this is missing, that's missing. And by the way, Eric, the time I sent you the message was about that. I was trying to, oh, let me see if it's possible to do this. Even more, I found another way, and that's it. But in any case, uh, Contentful, they have SDKs for Ruby, PHP, Android, uh, iOS, and they have an unofficial one for Python, they have for Java, and so on and so forth. This is the kind of stuff, if you have an API, you create a, a dump-proof solution for users to start developing that. And, okay, why am I using Chrome for that? First of all, some reasons are really good. The first one is avoiding more custom PHP development, especially when to create anything using a, a decent web framework in PHP you need to touch like a dozen files. And honestly, I miss ZCML. I miss everything from going when I was like, okay, now I need to register a manager and uh, uh, do the dependency injector in here and there and so on and so forth. It was insane. Also, batteries included. One thing I learned over the years with uh, content management, oh, it's an easy solution. It's quite, quite simple. Yeah, for the first, few days. Then, what happens? Oh, now I need something better. Now I need, oh, this kind of idea of uh, uh, if I do something, I want to tweet that. If I do this other thing, I want to basically pick, uh, uh, talk to Prehender IO and, hey, invalidate the, the, the version I have in there. And also, the truth is, I'm quite still productive with Chrome. I was able to come up with the proof of concept for Renko and for uh, writing in less than two hours without Chrome REST API at the moment. So I was like, eh, it can be done, right? But there's a, a really important reason. And the reason is, yeah, I did not look for any hosted, hosted solution at the moment. I was like, oh fuck, we need to, to solve that problem and let me do it. In the end, it's, uh, it's great, it's amazing, it touches my tech side, but it doesn't hold up, uh, hold, uh, hold up in the long run. Especially because I was the only one knowledgeable enough to, to maintain the clone solution. So, let me call, there's no one there anymore, the solution is just hanging on. 
uh, for running, something happened and they are changing that for another solution. Because, oh, I don't want to touch this one thing, it's magical and so on. Actually, it's not, but you know how things are. But I still love God. You see, I even put some hearts inside the plum logo because eh, I love plum. Plum saves the day every day. So, I have some good reasons. One of them is I really like the idea of having one API endpoint. One, actually, one API gateway that connects everything I have uh, in terms of uh, microservices. That gives us uh, a lot of control over performance issues, a lot of control in terms of uh, pre-handling and caching of uh, everything, because we use uh, Angular, uh, Angular 2. So when someone publishes something, uh, changes the content, I go to pre-render IO and say, oh, hello pre-render, come and get a new fresh version. Go to Cloudflare, come and get uh, uh, invalidate the existing version. This is integrated with everything else we do, so it saves a lot of time. And uh, integration is the key for front-end development. I really do not want to have someone that specializes in developing the site and someone that specializes in developing everything else for the company. We are a startup in the long run. Uh, uh, being able to, to have one developer that goes to different parts of the system goes a long way. And now I have four plum developers in the team. Come on. How many companies have four plum developers? I know some plum uh, development companies worldwide, uh, companies that have like two or three. So uh, I know it's not a good solution, but at least I'm not the only one. If I see somebody can go there and fix everything. Uh, we have uh, the guy with the glasses in the corner is uh, JS. JS is uh, like a really, really amazing developer. He, I, I believe he gave a talk in Brasilia. Uh, he was the specialist at Simplis for like three or four years in importing content. He was the person that understood how Transmogrifier worked. We have the guy with the uh, reddish, uh, salmonish uh, shirt. That's Huda. Some of uh, you met him in Arnhem. He has been doing code as, I believe, as long as I do, or even longer. And uh, the other guy with the, the bird in front is uh, Edgar Zanella. He's uh, our front end developer, but he's experienced with. Army and also clone, we worked in the original Brazil of the outside. So in the end, now we have uh, we have people that can basically go there and change stuff and question every every decision we do. And we have some results. Earlier on, you saw Kat saying hello in here, and she's the one taking care of uh, all communications for our company. And she's the one that basically deals with Plum every day. She goes there, create content, publish content. From time to time, she comes uh, with a really hard problem that takes usually three minutes and uh, uh, travel to the user interface of dexterity content types to solve. So she was amazed the other day, like, oh, I need to do that. And okay, done through the web. And uh, we have Yael, our uh, Product manager, she was freaking out. Oh, we need a new site, we need a new site, we need a new site. And then, in a couple of days, like two days, we had the CMS, put the content, the site will be there. We launched the site on time. Uh, considering uh, at that moment, we had one front end developer, and that person was, you know, yours truly. So I had to learn TypeScript in a few days. It was really interesting. And I learned to hate uh, the, the whole JavaScript environment with, OK, I developed everything with LC2 of Angular. OK, there's a new version. Let me upgrade. Bad idea. A whole day goes to waste, and so on and so forth. You know that. I've been following some of you complaining about that. I think it was still the other day complaining about Webpack. Thank you. You saved me a lot of time. I avoided that. 
And uh, that's, uh, that's how, uh, uh, how painful it is. I keep looking at you guys and saying, okay, if someone goes there and is not happy, I'm not going there as well. And I have Leo, it's our UX expert, and that was his phrase when he saw the, 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 the CMS for the first time. He was like, oh, that's so much better than WordPress. Did you develop this by yourself? Yes, of course, I'm amazing. I can make a solution like that in two days. No, no, no. And uh, he was impressed. And also, there's Alina, or, uh, our designer. And I asked for a phrase, and she was like, come on, I use it only once. Why are you asking me? Yeah, because, you know, I need it for, so that's it. Uh, under the hood, we have some content types. All of them, everything is dexterity. We created some custom uh, content types. Uh, we have our image gallery. We have our team roster. So if you go to briefy.co, you're going to see the, uh, this content stack. And uh, of course, I could have use of a uh, folder and so on. But in terms of uh, serialization, it was easier to customize if we had a small content type than trying to come up with crazy ideas on the on the serialization for uh, the usual types. And we have this uh, one size fits all solution called composite page. Basically it's a container for rows of blocks. So uh, think about uh, uh, content panels, uh, collective cover, uh, and all the other solutions, even Mosaic, without caring about the Leo uh, display and positioning of everything. It's like, give me a list of elements, and each one of them will be typed, and on the front end, the magic will happen, right? For instance, we have a Jumotron block, and okay, now I need to, to align everything to the left. We put a CSS class on the, on the, the CMS, and it basically does the trick. Also, we created some behaviors. One is for canonical URL, because we have some crazy, lo crazy logics. Uh, everything we serve, we serve under API, API of brief. But on this side, it needs to be different. And also, uh, we need to, from time to time, create different rules for different uh, contents and so on. A lot, so we have a solution for basically generating a lot of social metadata in a format that the content developer will be happy. And uh, now we have one to control the menu and site configuration. Uh, we were really considering using the default one, blowing, but we went, uh, we honestly we took some bad decisions in the content side, so it's kind of not doable. Uh, the building blocks of this, Clone, REST API, we, uh, the first two sites I developed uh, with this concept, they were basically adapters and browser views, but now I'm using REST API because it's amazing. Yeah, I'm saying that. And we are using Clone app multilingual and uh, also amazing, even though our Voyage site is not live yet, it's going to be there in terms of managing content saves a lot of time. We have a policy package in there because uh, even though I, uh, we are able to do everything to the web, one thing I, I like to control is have versioning of everything, being able to quickly create a new site on my machine and play with it. So nothing fancy, uh, somewhat great and so on. We use PyCharm. Is Paul ever around? Yeah. I imagine, thank you, sir. This is not a uh, product placement, it's not paid, but come on, if you want to send me some stickers, I'm happy. No problem with that. Uh, one thing I would do a lightning talk if I was there, it's about the way we deploy stuff. We are using, uh, we are basically using Amazon for everything. We have Kubernetes, a cluster of, uh, uh, with Kubernetes, and we have the solution called Base. Uh, I highly recommend using that if you do, if you need to quickly deploy stuff, if you need to uh, uh, have different environments and scale things as fast as you can. It's like a time saver. 
And uh, of course, we use Tango. Uh, who heard of Tango before? Anyone? Okay. Basically, Tumblr, it's an image server. It's built uh, over Tornado. It was created by this uh, Brazilian uh, company called Globo.com. Basically, it's written in Python. Most of the guys that created the solution, they came to their first PyCon Brazil conference because we basically paid for them and so on and so forth. And this solution is amazing. It, uh, it's, uh, it's, I believe for three or four years has been my dream to make it work with GNOME because it solves the problem of automatic cropping an image in different styles and so on without cutting somebody's head and, uh, or eventually applying some filters. So uh, in our company at Griffey, it's uh, what we need to do all the time. So, oh, for the interface, for quality assurance, I need to generate a thumbnail that's going to be 150 by 150, but I need to keep the, the, the orientation and the exact, uh, exact rate of the image, a ratio of the image. So, oh, fill the image with uh, that color when uh, it's a different ratio than 150 by 150. Go there and apply a filter like apply grayscale. There, we have one customer that requires us to deliver to them two versions of the image. One is the original file, and one is okay. I need a picture that maximum four megabytes. So we have a filter set up in Tumblr, and we basically say, "Hello, Tumblr, give me that original and four megabytes," and it's quite quite easy. Uh, Okay, I'm getting there. Just <laughs> under the slides now. Uh, we do that using even subscribers. I was planning to basically uh, override the long, uh, long blog file, image file, name of blog file, and so on. It was too hard. I was too lazy. I need to get it done. So every time there is a, a there is a change on an object, I go there. Oh, is there an image view? Yes. Uh, put on Amazon S3. Give me the, the, the address. Put on a, a notation. What's the path to the image on Tumblr? And that's it. So we generate different sizes for every image, not on Tumblr, but on Tumblr. Would save a lot of time if I basically save the, the file itself, the original file there, instead of saving on the some lessons for Chrome. First of all, documentation, documentation, documentation. Really, uh, everything I did was possible because of documentation. It's getting really easy to find the, the right uh, solution for everything. Uh, honestly, the I'm getting lazy. I'm using Google more than anything else because instead of remembering what I did last time, I basically go there check and, oh, okay, here's the solution. Uh, also, more documentation, more documentation, more documentation. And uh, in here, I'd like to share something. It's, we need to have more initiatives like Chrome Client, because if we do that, we break the, 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 the aversion some developers have to use Chrome. Imagine we have a package, and the guys from Prismic, they have this package to integrate with Django. Okay, I love Django. Django is cool. It's amazing. It's so 2006. <laughs> Perfect. Here it is. Here's the package you use. You connect Django to, uh, uh, to the CMS and so on. And uh, the third one is the most important. We need a real decent uh, commercial offering of uh, uh, hosted Bloom. A headless hosted phone because nowadays I don't keep a, a CI server. I use Threads and I pay for it. I use Slack and I pay for it. I use Amazon, pay for it. Jira, Mailchimp, Google, Asana, GitHub. Every time someone does something that saves me time, I'm not going to waste time trying to create it myself. I would basically go there, pay for someone to keep that working for me. 
and basically focus on my uh, uh, daily business. To give an idea, there's a company here in Berlin that offers the same type of service Tumblr does. These guys are making a lot of money because, oh, you want your image to be web where uh, uh, web where available, you want them to be on a CDN, we deliver that to you and so on. And uh, I think a company that does that, it's going to be awesome. And the truth is, my plan is in one year to basically uh, stop with the CMS development in here and move to a hosted solution. Because we have a bigger fish to, to, to catch every day. And hello, questions. And uh, let me put my face back. Okay. So Open for questions, technical ones, not technical ones. The quality of beer is amazing, it's cheap as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you said that you're using phone red tape, yeah, which is which is awesome. Uh, I was just wondering if there are any like missing pieces that that you would need from like from that API. Honestly, uh, when I started for, with uh, Lenko and uh, Rylink, REST API was nowhere close of what I needed. Right now, it's solving more problems than uh, the ones I could think of. Actually, uh, I keep thinking like the services. Uh, that are being provided on uh, the REST API, they show that, okay, I solved a lot of problems in the wrong way, so I need to go back and refactor my solution. Uh, one thing I, I'm still doing, and uh, that's an interesting problem to solve is, I mark all the requests with, uh, with a, mark, uh, yeah, a marker interface, to make sure that, okay, if someone requests that page, I keep the same address as always, but if someone uh, asks for, uh, for this page, uh, using a certain header, I basically serve it with uh, the, the REST API. Otherwise, I go back to the, to the normal, uh, uh, normal way. But REST API, I'm happy. Really. And thank you, it saved a lot of time, and it was quite a, ple a pleasant surprise when I had two days great uh, CMS <coughs> in here in Brazil. Any other questions? Next question. No? Alright. Well, thank you. So, to, uh, I need one more second because, come on, more slides. And uh, I would like to, to basically some, uh, say thank you for Alina Miller, that's her Instagram account. Follow her, all the doodles you saw in here, she prepared to me in the last few days. The, the whole look and feel for the company, the, the corporate identity, she was the one coming up with it. So she's really amazing and uh, I suggest you guys follow her. It's going to be interesting, especially because she doesn't know I'm saying that. She's going to freak out tomorrow as I basically post what was her reaction. And of course, thank you. And uh, there's a slide in there. You know that slide? Okay, you've seen that before. But thank you. My contact information is in here. And uh, I'd like to say that. If any of you come this part of the world, I would be happy to, to have drinks with you. If you need a place to stay, like Nico, come as well. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you in Sorrento, probably. <laughs>